Two eight five one, turn right heading one eight zero. Hey everyone, welcome to DJ's Aviation. In today's video, I'll be attempting to dive into the question, do we need a Boeing 797 or new middle of the market airliner from Boeing? First of all, where has all this talk about a Boeing 797 come from exactly? The whole 797 rumours and talk have come from analysts and Boeing hinting at a new middle of the market airliner which is going to be released very soon. From this point onwards many have dubbed it to be the Boeing 797 and although this isn't the name that has officially been revealed many are certainly hinting towards it. And while I've said analysts have been the one to dub it the 797 in fact it hasn't just been them. It's also been multiple airlines who have been noted to have interest in the aircraft's potential. They've mentioned in interviews they weren't sure, quote, when the 797, or whatever it was going to be called, would release, further hinting that this would be known as the 797. In this video, I plan to of course dive into if we need a 797, but before I begin with that, I want to take a look at what the 797 is predicted to do and the purpose it'll serve for airlines and so on, hopefully further helping you form an opinion. The Boeing 797 has been tipped to launch at the 2018 Farnborough Air Show, which at the time of recording this isn't that far away. There are two different versions of a launch in the aviation industry, and often you can get mixed up with the two of them. The launch I am talking about is when Boeing revealed the design, renderings, specifications and so on for the very first time and then therefore will start taking orders. The other launch will be possibly 8 years away when the first airline receives it. It's been reported that the aircraft will have an economy seat layout of 232 and have large overhead luggage bins. A huge key to this aircraft being attractive is the fact that the 797 will no doubt be another revolutionary aircraft made up of composite material, like what the 787 is made out of. Therefore, it'll be able to economically connect hundreds of non-stop routes, while of course opening hundreds more, with a key focus on routes between smaller cities, which at this stage may not be connected. With still not a whole lot of images around showcasing what the 797 is actually going to look like, it's hard to get a feel for what the design is going to be. A lot of people have speculated that it could be a stretched 737 MAX, possibly the 757 but with a different name, or even a shorter 787. From the few renderings we have seen, which I should mention are unconfirmed, it does look like it'll incorporate various features from the Boeing family aircraft. It's been noted that the aircraft will be able to fly for 10 to 11 hours, and therefore carry between 220 and 270 passengers. Whether we'll see Boeing release multiple variants, which will allow the airlines to switch between highly populated cabins, or an extended range version is still up in the air, and would probably rest on if the aircraft was in high enough demand, and what airlines are really actually interested in purchasing it. So a new Boeing aircraft will always be an attractive option to airlines that choose not to go with Airbus, and then vice versa. Some airlines prefer Airbus aircraft. It just depends on the relationship between the manufacturer and the airline, and of course the product that is on offer to them. Middle of the market jets are in high demand, so right now we can tick the imaginary box that if the demand for a 797 is there. As I've mentioned in previous videos where I do discuss the 797, and speaking of that, I am going to be creating a playlist titled the Boeing 797. I'll be dumping in there every single video I've made on the 797, so if you are interested in watching more videos about it, I'll be leaving a link to that in the description below. Hopefully there'll also be a card in the top right of your screen about now directing you to that playlist. And back onto what I was saying now, the 797 can in fact be utilised on various different routes in all parts of the globe. Often aircraft like the 747-8 or the A380 are heavily restricted in the routes they operate because airlines would prefer to place them on long-haul flights rather than a quick 20-minute flight. In saying that, Emirates do operate extremely short services with their A380, but hopefully you can get what I'm trying to say. 
This 797 with a likely range of 11 to 12 hours or 9,300 kilometers will actually open up a wide range of possibilities. In fact, middle of the market airliners are so practical for multiple reasons, but there is one key and it lies in the name itself. They are the middle. Therefore, by being in the middle, it allows them to operate within long haul and short haul flights. Of course, the aircraft will never reach the heights of the A350 ULR or 7778 in terms of range, but for its size, it will still be quite attractive to airlines that want to utilize it for short haul and long haul operations. Do we need it though? I'd say we do right now. Boeing offer a number of aircraft already, like the new 737 MAX series. However, the only option that is close to the 797 is the MAX 10, and even still, a number of airlines have decided to steer away from that. On the other side of the pond, Airbus have their highly successful A321 series, with the likes of the A321neo, A321neo Long Range, A321 Airbus Cabin Flex, and more. All of these aircraft are on offer to various carriers trying to suit their needs. Boeing though don't have a real alternative to this yet, and the 797 is tipped to eventually be that alternative. If Boeing wish to compete in this middle of the market, market, they need to launch their own product. Airliners like the 757 and 767 are unfortunately out of fashion, and United aren't the first carrier to pop up in the news, stating that they are looking to now replace these two aircraft as soon as possible because they are aging. The fact of the matter is, these airlines would likely order the 797 if it was on offer right now, but it isn't, and this can lead huge customers for Boeing, like United, to go and order the A330neo. So the Boeing 797 is needed for aircraft replacement as Boeing don't offer a perfect alternative. But let's take a look at where it may be needed. As I mentioned earlier, the beauty of middle of the market airliners like the 797 and A321 are they can operate throughout the world. The aircraft is going to likely cut fuel costs by 25 to 30% compared to the 787. This is another huge plus for Boeing and potential customers. But where is its biggest market? I'd personally have to say Asia. All stats, predictions, equations, and so on lead to Asia being the fastest growing place on Earth, and soon it'll be way past America in terms of air travel. With so many new aircraft needed, the 797 can be a way to combat this. With its low fuel costs and in turn being more fuel efficient, the aircraft can be mass produced and take the roles of the A320, 737, 757, 767, 7878, A320neo, 737 MAX, and so on. While Asia would be a huge market for the 797, Boeing has said that the potential routes for the 797 include Perth to Saigon, Perth to Delhi, and you kind of get my drift with that. Routes that have also been mentioned by the likes of Qantas include Sydney to Singapore, Melbourne to Vietnam, Sydney to somewhere in Vietnam, and so on. Right now, the airlines operating within these locations would probably have to utilize the 787, even if the demand wasn't actually there. The 797 could be the perfect aircraft to launch on these routes, Boeing states. The challenge for airlines today is that Boeing offers the 180 to 230 seat 737 MAX. This can only fly economically for about 6 hours, while the next smallest plane in the Boeing range is the 250 to 350 seat 787, which has been designed for much longer distances and thus carries a great deal of extra structural weight to carry the fuel required. If you notice, there isn't really anything in the middle. Right now, this is what Boeing is trying to achieve for its customers. In an earlier video I made, I actually discussed how Asian carriers wanted an increased cargo section. However, the company is willing to compromise on cargo space to reduce the profile and thus drag of the aircraft. It reasons that cargo is not as big of a consideration on the largely secondary routes it will operate. This brings up a twist. If Boeing are not willing at this point in time to listen to carriers' demands in one could argue a location where the 797 would thrive, do we need it? As mentioned in this video alone, there is the A321 in the market and flying right now. It only takes a quick analysis and then talks for an airline that was previously interested in the capabilities of the 797 
to convert to the A321 and therefore render Boeing with one less customer. So what do you think? I personally believe the 797 is needed or another sort of middle of the market airliner from Boeing in general. The aircraft would combat the increase in population while at the same time slotting in nicely as the sole option for airlines between the 737 and 787. Let me know your thoughts on the 797, maybe the rivalry between the 797 and A321 as well in the comment section below. While I can't always respond to every single comment, I read almost every single one, and if I'm not responding, a welcoming person from our community will likely be happy to discuss these sorts of things with you. If you're new to the channel, feel free to hit that subscribe button, and of course, if you enjoyed this video, a like on it would be very much appreciated. I'd like to take the time now to thank you very much for watching this video of mine, and I hope you'll all join me in my next one.